Well, the, uh, one of the most fascinating things about Jack Parsons is that he excelled in two very desperate parts of life. He was a world-class uh, rocket scientist, and then he was a world-class occultist. So these are two tracks that usually don't go along the same line, at least that we know of. It's quite fascinating that someone would excel so highly in two different areas. Well, I think they're both, um, I think both of these realms are about the hidden, the mysterious. Um, at rocketry at that time was considered, it was all sci-fi, so it was imagination, fantasy. I think a lot of the occult rituals that they perform have to do with invoking the imagination, the fantasy, and so on. They both have to do with creating worlds that are different than the mainstream world we live in. So I think there's a lot that the similar type of personality would be interested in both of those things. I can understand that. Even though one is uh, what we would call very left brain scientific, there was still so much with Jack that it was about envisioning how a f a the future could be. And we might think of a magical practice or an occult practice as being more right brained, but the type of occult practice that he was involved in has a lot to do with structure, imagining, following particular rituals, which would be left brain involvement also. There are about four theories about how he died. One is that it was suicide. Uh, his father had been hospitalized for a long time for uh, intractable depression and uh, they didn't have the uh, treatments that we have today. So it may have been some sort of genetic propensity. Of course, he was using massive quantities of alcohol and drugs, which are depressive in nature. So that's one theory. That's not my favorite. Um, there's another theory that it was an accident. He blew himself up, which is quite possible because he uh, had had accidents previously. Uh, he had been expelled from school, actually, when he was young for a creating accidents <laughs> with explosives. Uh, another theory is that um, he was murdered, and um, there are several suspects, if this is true, um, he was being watched by the FBI. Uh, he was being watched by the Pasadena Police Department. And there is a very fascinating theory, which is lately is uh, what seems most true to me, which is that earlier he had, I think it was about 10 years before he died, I'm not sure on the exact amount of time, but he had provided expert witness. Uh, there was a lot of corruption going on in LA uh, government at the time. And he had provided expert witness against somebody, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, some very corrupt politician, uh, that he had been using explosives and Jack's testimony put this guy away in the penitentiary for 10 years. And he had just been released a few days prior to Jack's death. So it's quite possible that this person uh, carried a grudge uh, and came out and one of his first orders of business was to take care of the person who had put him in jail for 10 years. There is some evidence that Cameron was waiting for him. They were going to go on a trip somewhere and uh, it seems like that they were, uh, that he, Jack probably wasn't depressed. This is all conjecture of course, but there are some reports that Jack wasn't depressed. He was looking forward to going on this trip with Cameron. She was waiting for him and uh, so that would speak to perhaps some sort of uh, crime happening. Well, JPL, first of all, fi fired Jack for his occult proclivities, and they probably are embarrassed about that now. Um, it's, the occult is still seen as something uh, people have to whisper about, or uh, they're afraid it'll put a bad mark on their record. Uh, it's still very mysterious and uh, full of secrets. Uh, it's sex positive, which the mainstream culture is, doesn't really like. And um, so all of these things just make Jack this most interesting person that he was, that he excelled in these fields that are so different.